a true test. To evaluate the depth of our commitment to Christ, we should consider the degree we are willing to endure discomfort as ambassadors for Christ. Here's Gene to explain this principle. In 2 Corinthians 6, he now begins to get more specific. Remember those four statements he made earlier? Now he just expands it in this passage. He says, We give no opportunity for stumbling to anyone, so that the ministry will not be blamed. But in everything as God's ministers, we commend ourselves. And here's how we commend ourselves. Not with letters of recommendation. Not by bragging about what we're doing. But about what we are and what we're willing to sacrifice. By great endurance. By afflictions. By hardships. By pressures. By beatings. By imprisonments. By riots. By labors. By sleepless nights. By times of hunger by purity, by knowledge, by patience, by kindness. And by the way, when he says by purity, I think what he's saying is that we don't give in to the flesh, and the pleasures of the flesh. We're disciplined. By the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the message of truth, by the power of God, through weapons of righteousness on the right hand and the left, through glory and dishonor, whether we're honored or whether we're dishonored through slander as well as good reports. Didn't, didn't say that he didn't like good reports, but he said, even if we're slandered, as deceivers yet true, as unknown yet recognized, as dying and look, we live as being chastened yet not killed, as grieving yet always rejoicing, as poor yet enriching many, as having nothing yet possessing everything. You see, he gets pretty specific now about those four statements earlier in terms of, of what uh, they have endured. And so Paul is saying, I am living out what God said I would face when he called me out of my rebellion and arrogance and murderous activities. And if you go back to Acts 9.15, where he was converted on the road to Damascus, and Ananias, the Lord spoke to him and said, I want you to meet with Saul. And Ananias said, you, uh, you don't understand, Lord, what kind of man this is. And uh, the Lord spoke back to Ananias and said, Go, for this man is my chosen instrument, to carry my name before Gentiles, the Corinthians, to name a few of them, kings, Agrippa and Festus and others we read about in the book of Acts. And the sons of Israel. Not just the Gentiles. Because when Paul would go into cities, he would minister to the Gentiles and the Jews. First really to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. But notice, here's the key. I will certainly show him how much he must, what? Suffer for my name. God said right from the very beginning when he called him, you're going to suffer, Paul. And so Paul was not surprised by, by this suffering. Now, the fact is that Paul, writing his last letter to Timothy, generalized that and said, in fact, all those who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Perhaps not like Paul, probably not like Paul, but there will come times when we're going to live godly lives, we're going to be Persecuted. People are not going to like the way we live. And we're very fortunate that we haven't faced a lot of that. The fact is we may face a lot more of it as days go on, even in our own culture and society. 1 Peter 3, 14, 15, But even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear or be disturbed, but set apart the Messiah as Lord in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Now, again we need to remind ourselves that Paul's calling was unique. He was an apostle of the Gentiles and God predicted there would be suffering. There are very few, even missionaries today, who suffer like Paul suffered. 
Thank God. But the fact of the matter is that we are to evaluate the depth of our commitment to Christ and His mission to the degree we're willing to endure discomfort as what? Ambassadors for Christ. And so the question, in what ways have you suffered because of your commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ and His calling on your life to be dedicated disciple? And as I looked at that and thought about that, I, I wrote this little note. Compared with Paul, virtually nothing <laughs> in terms of suffering. Now, I've been falsely accused, but not like Paul. Uh, it's, it was seasonal. <laughs> it wasn't consistent like Paul faced it throughout his ministry. I've been betrayed, but that's been seasonal. That was painful. Uh, I find that as I look back on those experiences in ministry, probably the greatest learning experiences of my life, um, some of it happened to me because I just made bad judgments in leadership, in people. Trusted people I shouldn't trust. Uh, in that sense, I brought some of it on myself. But on the other hand, uh, I learned through it. Hopefully not to make those mistakes again. In other cases, I don't think I deserved it. I don't think I did anything wrong. I think it was just people betrayed me. And it wasn't anything that I did. But the fact of the matter is that very few of us suffer like Paul. And this, this was just a, a great ministry to me as I reflected on Paul's sufferings. And uh, even in our lives, of course, anything that makes us uncomfortable, we don't like. But we have not experienced, the majority of us, what Paul, no, very few have experienced what the Apostle Paul experienced. Though you, you do read through church history and you will find there are people that really uh, burned to the stake for their faith, were killed. In fact, you read the book of Hebrews chapter 11, some of the things that Christians endured because of their faith. Something that we've been spared, and I hope we'll be spared <laughs> until Jesus comes. But the fact of the matter is, it's a great, great lesson because the degree to which we are able to remain true to the Lord is the degree to which we are really committed to Him.